It feels very surreal to finally be sharing this news with you, but as you may have gathered from the title, Luke and I are expecting a baby next year. We are due in March, at the start of March, so it's going to be Pisces baby, and we are both really, really excited. I'm currently at the 20 week mark, so I do definitely have a little bit of a bump, and um, you may may have potentially spotted it in my insta stories and my daily outfits i have been very strategic about how i've stood until i was ready to share the news but yeah i just really wanted to kind of update you guys on what was going on in my life just because i feel like those of you who do watch my videos on a regular basis you are a big part of my life and you know i feel like i've really connected with so many of you um now I am going to talk a bit about our pregnancy journey in this video, but I did want to touch on content and I guess sort of what you can expect from me over the next five months because obviously some things are going to change just a little bit. And you may have seen a vlog that I shared around about a month ago, I'm going to link it up here, where I had mentioned that I was feeling a little bit burnt out. And the reason why was because I had spent all of my first trimester filming as much content as I possibly could. I was really conscious of making sure that I could provide really well-rounded videos so that uh, you wouldn't feel like you were missing out because my body is changing. And I'm really planning on doing a bit of a mix of um, both what I can wear currently so some maternity videos but also you can still expect to see your general style videos from me as well as styling advice that sort of thing if you are also pregnant congratulations and I would love to know if there's anything in particular you would like to see I'll probably do an autumn winter and a spring summer maternity capsule wardrobe video so two separate ones but if there's anything else in particular that you think would be interesting leave that in the comment section below so that I can kind of factor that into my schedule as you can tell I'm very organized so if there is ever any discrepancy in the way that I look, <laughs> that is completely why. I filmed so many IGTV videos as well and I've got loads of photos which I still haven't even had a chance to edit and share on Instagram. So I'd say Instagram is probably the place where it's going to seem the most noticeable but I did just want to flag that and there are a couple of reasons why. So um, one of the reasons why I wanted to, why I took so long to actually share the news that we're pregnant and I wanted to wait to the halfway point was because um, this is not the first time I've fallen pregnant so Luke and I have been trying for quite a while. first got pregnant last year in January 2018 and we've been trying for a few months at that point and we're both really really thrilled. I actually found out on my mum's birthday and uh, it was sort of a week later on my birthday that we had it confirmed by the doctor through blood tests and things but it sort of felt like something was wrong the entire time. I had quite a bit of bleeding and I know that that can be normal in some pregnancies but the doctors did just want to keep a close eye on me just in case it was something uh, to be concerned about. Uh, around the, I think I must have been seven or eight weeks pregnant, I uh, ended up having a bit of pain and I went back to the doctors and they identified that I had an ectopic pregnancy. If you aren't familiar with what this is, it's essentially where the baby or the egg kind of latches onto your fallopian tube and it starts growing there. And it can be fatal if it's not caught early enough. I was incredibly fortunate because the doctors were able to diagnose it so early, which meant that I had options. So I could either choose to uh, be injected with a dose of methotrexate or alternatively, I could have my fallopian tube removed because there is a chance of it reoccurring in the same tube in future pregnancies. Um, I decided I wanted to keep both my tubes, so I took the methotrexate option. The only downside to that is that it meant that there was a three month waiting period before we could start trying again. It was definitely a really kind of tough time and I have to say the, the discomfort that you feel after being injected with the methotrexate is it's not very pleasant at all. It's not a pleasant experience to have to go through and I actually was off work for a couple of weeks. Um, I feel really grateful for the support that I got from my workplace when I was at Discovery. They were very understanding. I did tell, um, because I didn't want there to be a stigma around what had happened, I did tell some of my closest work colleagues. I told, We told our friends and family as well and I think I'm really glad that I did have that support and that I was able to share that. The other thing that happened was I had a pap smear around the time that we found out that we were expecting 
and it came back with anomalies so there were precancerous cells found on my cervix and I had to have a colposcopy. I do have to say that I think cervical health is something that's very important and it's definitely something you should be doing going and getting a pap smear if you aren't. Uh, so I had to have a colposcopy a month after the ectopic pregnancy so uh, I would say it was all a bit of a shock to my system down there. I remember being terrified actually because they put you under general anaesthetic and I was so nervous before I had the surgery. Um, so again with that it meant that you couldn't try for three months and I feel like those two events really disrupted my body's natural uh, function. So I ended up having irregular periods from then. My cycles would be anywhere from 38 days to over 60 days and it made it really hard for us to be able to judge when I might be ovulating or you know when the right time to try would be uh, which you know it's a bit of a science really if you have started a family of your own or you're kind of in the process of wanting to start or grow your family you will know. Uh, so that made it really difficult and and because the issue seemed to be ongoing, I actually uh, got a referral to go to a specialist and she had told me at the time that I went that it was highly unlikely that I was ovulating as a result of my irregular cycles, which is not the most uplifting thing. So I was sort of waiting to go and have a barrage of tests and potentially look at doing fertility treatments when we found out that we, we, that we were pregnant. So uh, we were so blessed I would say to actually have been able to conceive naturally we're so happy that we're kind of starting this next phase of our lives and you know the next journey together or the next adventure really um, and I kind of wanted to share you know our own experience with you because I know that there are so many other couples out there who are dealing with loss or infertility and it can feel really lonely and I just wanted you to know that you're not alone <laughs> so it's making me like <laughs> emotional I am so quick to cry at the moment <laughs> but yeah I just wanted you to know that you are not alone um, so yeah that is kind of our pregnancy journey um, in terms of other things sorry the lighting is all over the place today it's very cloudy um, in terms of other things uh, we found out at the five week mark that we were pregnant um, I actually had started feeling symptoms really early on my breasts kind of grew an entire size and I had they felt very itchy and just sore and swollen and that was sort of the bit the first indicator for us that something was changing in my body I was very fortunate not to have any serious morning sickness. I had mild nausea for maybe two weeks, but aside from that, it's been a very, very easy pregnancy for me. I think the worst part was the progesterone bloat, which, gosh, I, like, I remember thinking I was so bloated at the time, and it was very uncomfortable, very painful. I identified what foods I could and couldn't eat, because certain foods made it really severe, uh, but that was probably the most difficult thing that I had to kind of work through, and I also had a bit of exhaustion. I have to say, I feel so privileged that I work from home and that I work for myself, because it meant that I could work my schedule around, like I could work later in the evenings if I wanted to. I mean, some days I would fall asleep at two in the afternoon, because I was just so exhausted from all the changes that were happening in my body. Um, what else? I also had really bad skin and I was so ravenous in the first three months. I definitely think I put on a couple of kilos during that first trimester just from the quantity that I was eating because I just could not stop. I was hungry all the time. My, t my appetite has definitely evened out now and it's sort of what it was previously but yeah that was just a whole shock to the system. Um, I think probably the only other thing that's been really hard for me is the fact that I don't have my mum and this is going to make me really emotional again but um, my mum passed away four and a half years ago from cancer if you weren't aware I have shared this a couple of times but it's not something I talk about often uh, it was really sudden I found out three weeks before she passed away that she was sick and uh, she's my best friend and sorry <laughs> I was really hoping I'd be able to film this video without crying but I just, I know how much my mum would have loved being a yeah yeah and it just makes me sad that I'm not able to share it with her. So, um, we're, I'm so fortunate for all of the familial support that we've got from my grandparents, my uncle, Luke's parents, and also my dad and my stepmom. So, uh, I, I feel so lucky and grateful to have that support, but it's just one of, you know, one of those things I do wish I could have shared this with my mum. So, yeah. <laughs> um, on another 
another note, um, I did just want to say uh, thank you guys so much for all of your support over the years. I really appreciate it. And I'm really excited to bring you along with me on this next journey. Um, I am planning on doing a little bit of a closet rejig, which will be coming this Sunday, just because there are things that don't fit me. I've kind of been slowly moving things out of my closet already that aren't fitting me anymore but I want to create more of a capsule wardrobe so that I know what I can wear and I can just go to my closet and grab something that works for me and I'm going to put a lot of stuff into storage so yeah that'll be coming this Sunday if you want to have a watch of that then keep your eyes peeled um wow it feels really weird knowing that this is going to be out on the internet on Thursday so uh yeah <laughs> thank you again for watching and I will see you very soon with a new video bye